Yeah. Derek Carr has played 17 games against the Chiefs in his career. It's a lot. He is Whole season. Three, he is 3 and 14. Um, he has completed 62.5% of his passes, 26 touchdowns, 17 interceptions. Uh, and he's been sacked 41 times. Um, I would say that if you're the Chiefs, you're feeling, feeling pretty good about seeing Derek Carr coming to town. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network, proudly presented by Emprise Bank. If you're thinking about starting a business or know someone who is, check out Emprise Bank's SBA loans. It's always good to know your options, and they can be your partner in possible. Five things to watch here on KC Sports Network, presented by Batchelder Family Farms. You can now order Batchelder's fresh farm-raised products online in just a few clicks at Batchelder familyfarms.com. You can also find their bison at the Overland Park Farmer's Market and the River Market on Saturdays where they have their pasture-raised beef and bison, jerky, and eggs. You can visit their farm store for the freshest cuts and other locally sourced products Wednesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 20810 South Prospect Avenue in Belton, Missouri. Again, this is five things to watch getting you ready for Chiefs Saints on Monday Night Football. And you're going to hear from a variety of people on the KC Sports Network line of uh, shows. It's going to be a good time. And we are kicking things off. And by we, I mean myself and Matthew Lane. Matthew, how we feeling? Listen, I mean, we're a little hungry after, you know, talking about Batchelder Farms. But also, we're doing good. We're ready for this game. The Chiefs have a chance to go into their bye week undefeated. They have a chance to go into the bye week in the sole possession of number one in the AFC. So big game on deck, but it's also coming at a good time for the Chiefs where they maybe have some things they want to straighten up afterwards. So good bye week timing. Hopefully the Chiefs go into it with a solid 5-0 and record. Yeah, that's the hope. You're uh, you're trying to just get through this next game as this team is assessing their situations with their pass catchers. Obviously, uh, Rishi Rice going on injured reserve and Hollywood Brown already there with him. So there's definitely some stuff to figure out. And one of the things that this team has been working through through the first four games of the year has been their offensive line. Uh, obviously, the, you know, like there's there's four starters from last year's team. One of them coming off uh, a torn bicep or pectoral injury uh, in, in Joe Tooney. And then a, a new a, a addition to the left tackle position with Juanay Morris now starting after Kingsley Suomataia began the season there. So some influx there at the left tackle position that has affected some games in the past year, right? So um, we're looking at this offensive line and, and you know, Mahomes hasn't looked entirely comfortable all the time from back there. Um, definitely something that, you know, I think this team has to continue to build build towards is just good chemistry with that offensive line uh, and good pass protection to help Patrick Mahomes feel comfortable back there in the pocket. Yeah. That's something that it's going to be paramount now with Rasheed Rice being out for this week and at least for the next couple games after this at at best. The pass protection I do think is going to have to step... I mean, everybody on the team on the offensive side is going to have to elevate their game a little bit, but I think it's going to start with the pass protection because, well, the unit has been fine. And depending on which metric you use, I think ESPN has rated them as one of the better pass blocking offensive lines in the NFL in terms of pass block win rate. And so, you know, for the most part, they have graded out fine. Look at all the metrics. But when we watch it, there clearly is an uncomfortable level like the, for Patrick Mahomes back there. He doesn't feel great about what's going on. And I think it's only kind of getting worse as the season's progressing, which is a little surprising because it felt like the biggest issue was starting Kingsley at left tackle to start the year. You kind of saw the peak of that in the Cincinnati Bengals game, and then you replace him with Wanya Morris, and I think the play has gotten better on the left side, so you would assume that Mahomes would start to feel more comfortable, but that just hasn't quite happened yet. I don't know if I agree with the offensive line playing that was one of the best pass-protecting units in the NFL, but I also don't think they've been terrible. It's just they don't seem to be on the same page as their quarterback right now. I think that's what it, it kind of feels like, and I don't know if there's a little bit of you know, scar tissue there from some of the early struggles at the le- on the left side with Patrick Mahomes, where I just, he didn't completely trust what was happening in his blind spot um, over at the left tackle position, wasn't feeling it as well and was getting walked into at times by Kingsley Suomataia, some win- some quick wins. And I don't know if that just kind of shook him up just a little bit um, as he's tried to work through, you know, hey, look, they've, they've had a new tackle in there for the last couple of weeks and he's done, like to your point, he's done fine. He's been fine. Um, I think he did a pretty good job last week. So I think 
you know, maybe at times a little bit of lack of comfort is unwarranted. Um, and not to say that the offensive line hasn't, you know, had its, has, has its share of blame either. Like, I think this is something that it falls on everybody. You know, I think Joe Tooney's looked a little bit, like, a little older this year. Like, I think this has been a year where he's kind of started to show his age a little bit, coming back from that injury, um, maybe not handling power as well, not anchoring, um, you know, the depth of where he anchors is a little bit deeper than it's been in the past. Like it just kind of looks a little bit different than it has. And he's still working through things. You hope he continues to build that rust off as he's he really didn't get much in the off season to kind of work through some things there. But, um, you know, I, I think, um, I just think it, it, it's going to take both of them and it's going to take time. And I think you're just hoping against a team that has some rushers that can kind of play with power over there, right? Like they have some guys that can play with power, that could really potentially collapse that pocket a little bit and give them some challenges that, to have to deal with the tackle spots. Yeah, there's a few things for them to worry about. I, I mean, I think you nailed it. I think it does start with the left side in particular. Um, not that the right side has been perfect, but I think Juan Taylor generally has been pretty good this year. Trey Smith is still the same guy. I think he's been better this year, but he's still the same guy. There's major wins, and it's going to be the occasional quick loss, but that's something that's been there his entire career. And especially on the right side, they do struggle to handle stunts over there because Juan Taylor gets so much depth. And Trey Smith like like people in a phone booth, so they do get on different levels. So I think you have seen some stunts and twists really get that side. But for the most part, from the center out to the right tackle, it's generally pretty secure. And I think you see Patrick Mahomes drift that direction, try to escape that direction, not only because he's comfortable throwing there, but there's a little bit more trust, I think, to that side of the offensive line. It's the left side where it does seem he's a little bit more skeptical. And I think you see him start to make a couple throws, but then tuck them away and then start to check that left side just to see what's happening. And the majority of that is probably coming from the left tackle play, which has been the most up and down over the past two years. But to your point, I don't think Joe Tooney's anchor has looked particularly great this year. He is getting walked back into the pocket a little bit. And when you're dealing with a left tackle that's new, that you're a little unfamiliar with, that you're a little afraid might give up some speed rushes up the arc, you want that comfort level of being able to step up. And I don't think that's always been there. And so hopefully Joe Tooney starts to turn it around. I know he's still coming back from a torn peck at the end of last year. So that could be playing a little bit of a role. It could be the age. It could be having to feel like he needs to give extra help to the left tackle. We don't know the rationale, but I will say that left side isn't playing bad. I just don't think Patrick Mahomes has a ton of confidence in him. And this is a big test. Very specifically for the Saints, you mentioned it, Carl Granderson, their defensive end this year is on fire. He's playing great. I think the way he rushes kind of reminds me of Trey Hendrickson. It's not that he can't turn the corner, but it's a very power-based attack with a lot of hand usage. And we know that is something that has given some of these Chiefs offensive tackles trouble in the past. So I got my eyes on what Granderson's going to do specifically when lined up on Wanya Morris, because I think not that the game's won or lost there, but Patrick Mahomes' comfort level might be decided by the first two drives and how Carl Granderson is being able to get controlled by this offensive line. You know, you know, I think one other thing just interesting about this offensive line and, and Patrick Mahomes doesn't feel like he's spinning out to the left as much as he used to either, right? And like obviously play flow goes to the to the strength, you know, to the right side, but it just does feel like there's also just like he's not trying to, to find his escape routes out left. So like what's going on there? What's the lack of comfort? Is there a little bit of lack of comfort there? But I don't think they're super far off. And I think Mahomes did try at times to stick in the pocket a little bit more at times in that game against the Chargers. And it didn't always work out. But I think there is, you know, an attempt to try to build some of that trust. So I think they're on uh, I think they're on the way. And they just, this is a good opportunity for them to continue to get better, continue to work through some things and, and hopefully, um, you know, rise to the occasion. We're going to throw it to Matt Hamilton. He's going to be talking about the Chiefs secondary versus New Orleans big play ability. The thing I'm watching for in this game is the Chiefs secondary against this Saints explosive passing game. And I know you don't think of Derek Carr, an explosive passing game, and the Saints are the heaviest run team in the NFL. But that's by design. That's opened things up down the field. Their commitment to the run, the offense does flow through Alvin Kamara. And Taysom Hill, when he's back there, has been lining up the tailback more at fullback. If he's healthy, that's a problem. But they do all that. They pound you up front to lull you to sleep and hit those big plays down the field. They're currently fourth in the NFL in yards per pass attempt, 8.2. And that's because of the big shots they hit down the field to Chris Olave, and even more so Rashid Shahid. He has been the big play machine for this offense. And you can't fall asleep for a second. You can't get lulled into you know that run game, start creeping up as a safety. Justin Reed and Brian Cook are going to have to be disciplined are going to have to be ready for those attacks because 
with what's going on offensively for the Chiefs, I think this is another game they're going to kind of have to grind out. And those one or two big plays that the Saints are going to try to hit down the field could end up being the difference in this entire game. That was one third of Matter Days here on KC Sports Network. Matt Hamilton joins the KC Laboratory every Wednesday for our game preview episode. Thanks to our guy, Matt Hamilton of FanDuel and Up and Adams. We're going to take a break. We'll be back right after this. Shop Chiefs tickets and more with no fees. Plus, save big with code KCSN at ticketsforless.com, the official ticket provider of KC Sports Network. I love a great deal just as much as the next guy, but I'm not going to crawl through a bed of hot coals just to save a few bucks. It has to be easy. No hoops, no BS. So when Mint Mobile said it was easy to get wireless for $15 a month with the purchase of a three-month plan, I called them on it. And you know what? It turns out it really is that easy to get wireless for 15 bucks a month. The longest part of the process was the time I spent on hold waiting to break up with my old provider. To get this new customer offer in your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash KCSN5. That's mintmobile.com slash KCSN, the number five. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash KCSN5. $45 upfront payment required, equivalent to $15 a month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes on unlimited plan. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. Five things to watch presented by Batch Elder Family Farms. Time to hear the beef of the week presented by Batch Elder Family Farms. You're going to hear from Tucker D. Franklin, Matt D. Matt Ver- Matt D. Verderam. Why not? We'll roll with that uh, from that football show. All right, it's time for beef of the week here on Five Things presented by our friends at Batch Elder Family Farms, and you get the best grass-fed beef and bison. Deliver if you go to batchelderfamilyfarms.com. You can order their fresh farm raised products online in just a few clicks. You can also find their bison at the Overland Park Farmers Market and the River Market on Saturdays, where they sell their pasture raised beef and bison, jerky, and eggs. You can also visit the farm store for the freshest cuts and other locally sourced products Wednesday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at 2810 South Prospect Avenue in Belton, Missouri. And look, an old friend is coming to town. Yes, yes. Maybe not necessarily a friend, but an old foe is coming to town in Derek Carr. And what other thing would we talk about on Beef of the Week than Derek Carr versus the Kansas City Chiefs, Matt? Because there have been a lot of chapters in this book already written, and there's been a lot of beef in this book been written. Yeah, so Derek Carr, I would say he's a friend of the Chiefs. Um, yeah. Yeah. Derek Carr has played 17 games against the Chiefs in his career. It's a lot. He is Whole three. And, he is three and fourteen. Um, he has completed sixty-two and a half percent of his passes, twenty-six touchdowns, seventeen interceptions, uh, and he's been sacked forty-one times. Um, I would say that if you're the Chiefs, you're feeling feeling pretty good about seeing Derek Carr coming to town. Uh, he's, he's six point three yards for attempt in his career against Kansas City, and has rushed for one hundred and one yards in seventeen games. So. Uh, he has not been, as you would say, great against the Chiefs. Also, the only shame of this game is that it's not in December. Mm-hmm. Because if Derek Carr has to play a game in cold weather in Kansas City, we know how it's going to turn out. I was at the game in 2016. That's if, for people who may remember it, but not like just immediately. That was the Tyree Kill returning a punt on Thursday Night Football against the Raiders game when he was a rookie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where the entire place broke out into a Tyree, Tyree chain. It was, at the time, it was one of the cooler moments I've ever had in a stadium. Like, I'll be honest, there was a little bit of weirdness in it in the sense I was like, man, like he had just gotten there. There was all that history of what happened with him in college. It right. felt a little bit like, I don't know, like chant this dude's name. Like, I don't know. But then you're a fan of the team and you're like, well, I'm rooting for the team. And so you're like, and then he returns that thing, whatever the hell it was, 75 yards. And you're like, this is, this is insane. It's a lot of times I've ever heard Arrowhead. But I bring that game up because Derek Carr that night went 17 of 41 for 117. Okay. And what was truly, I will never forget sitting up in this dance, freezing my ass off and thinking, the Raiders have no chance. Right. He can't complete a pass. And that was with Bob Sutton as a defensive coordinator. So, 
Yeah, I think beef of the week, it has to go to Derek Carr, who has been uh, nothing short of flat-out uh, terrible most games against Kansas City. This year, he's he's played okay this year. Yeah. Um, 824 yards, uh, six touchdowns, three interceptions, 72% completion percentage. So he is uh, playing pretty well this year. We'll see if that trend continues. I'm curious to see kind of how the offense really works with him going up against this uh, this Chiefs defense, as you mentioned, with Steve Spagnuolo. This might be one of those Steve Spagnuolo games where, like, all right, we're gonna come and get you. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna mess you up. We're gonna we're gonna mess with you for a little bit there. But Derek Carr coming back to Kansas City, uh, certainly a big storyline here with this with this offense, especially they got a little bit uh, banged up on the uh, the offense side of the ball. Uh, for the the Raiders, how do you like this matchup with Carr and the Chiefs defense currently? I think for the Chiefs, you get man coverage on Shahid and Olave, and you just blitz the absolute crap out of their car in this game. Yeah. I, I, that's my like. Look, they're beat up on the offensive line. Um, I would I would attack Derek Carr, but go ahead, man, because my whole feeling with Derek Carr has always been: if you can get pressure on him, it's kind of over. Yeah, he does not handle pressure very well. Now, to be fair, this year, his underlying numbers against pressure have been very, very good. But I'm going to go with the entire body of work for his career, not four games, and say if you can get pressure on Derek Carr, you feel pretty good. So uh, I think you heat him up. I think you heat him up. I think, you know, one thing, too, they don't, you know, we talked about it on our show, like they don't have a third receiver. Right. They don't. So, like, you really, you can blitz that third corner a lot if you want to in this game. And I would. If I were the Chiefs, that's exactly what I would do. It's going to be interesting to see. We've got our eye on that beef for the week. And if you want some beef, Batchelder Family Farms has you covered. You can go visit them at BatchelderFamilyFarms.com to order their farm-raised products there. Or you could go find them in the Overland Park Farmer's Market, the River Market on Saturdays where they sell all kinds of beef, bison, jerky, and eggs. And where you can just look. This is what you should do. You should just go out to the store and you can go see the beef and see the bison for yourself. Those, those things are some freaking units. Chief over there, he's a big boy. Wednesday to Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can go check them at 2810 South Prospect Avenue in Belton, Missouri. We're going to go ahead and send it back for more Five Things. Oh, I love dunking on Derek Carr. I hope that uh, hope the Chiefs are able to take care of business there. Now it's time to hear from Benny Heisler with Benny's Picks presented by Underdog. Make sure you use promo code KCSN. Heisler, what you got for us? Cats, appreciate you, my guy. What's good, everybody? Benny Heiss here. Time for a little opportunities on Monday Night Football Chiefs and Saints. With Underdog, we're going to go through our three favorite plays of the week. Uh, no, don't know if you noticed, but uh, Halloween's coming up uh, a handful of weeks away. Already got uh, the costumes ready to go. Um, October's awesome, but it is nothing compared to Boostober. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a new month. I'm putting it on the calendar. I am circling it because every day during Boostober, if you play on Underdog, they are offering customers a boosted picker promo every single day. Plus, if you sign up for new customers with promo code KCSN, you also will snag a week five free pick, which is Dak Prescott over 0.5 passing yards uh, in the Cowboys upcoming matchup Sunday night against Pittsburgh Steelers. Make sure you guys use that promo code KCSN and check out Underdog as the newest, fastest growing must check out destination for fantasy sports, including NFL Pick'em. Use code KCSN, score up to a thousand bucks in bonus cash on your first deposit. But now let's get to the picks. Uh, went one and two last week, five and seven on the year, uh, but have a feeling that uh, we are, are going to get back on the winning track. And we're going to start with a guy that we were right about last week, and that was Travis Kelsey going higher than five and a half receptions in week five on Monday night. And just going to go back to the well, guys, especially with the injury to Rasheed Rice. Uh, the future Hall of Famer had by far and away his best performance of the year in week four. And the Chiefs need stability right now on the offensive side of the ball. Mahomes is going to trust his target in the middle of the field. And it's actually an advantageous matchup for Kelsey as well. Uh, last week, the Saints took on the Eagles and their tight end, Dallas Goddard, had his way with the middle of the Saints secondary, as well as their linebackers trying to cover Dallas Goddard. 11 targets, 10 receptions, and 170 yards. Don't know if that's going to be Kelsey's numbers for this week, but I, I think looking at the amount of target volume he's likely to get, knowing that that security blanket in Rasheed Rice is not available this week, uh, they're going to scheme up ways to get Kelsey open and trust that connection between Mahomes and Kelsey. 
five and a half. The line has gone up just a little bit from last week, but not enough to the point where I'd want to start going lower. I like the higher for five and a half receptions for Travis Kelsey. Here's a lower play on the Kansas City side that I am intrigued by, and that is for Patrick Mahomes. Give me lower than 35 and a half yards for his longest completion against the Saints. Um, I know you all saw that home run ball to Xavier Worthy. Thing of beauty, just almost majestic, if you will. Um, you see how I'm trying to work in a, a couple Royals references here. Um, the thing is, th- this season, those deep passes from Mahomes have been actually a bit of an outlier. He ranks, this is according to Rich Rebar over at Sharp Football Analysis, Patrick Mahomes ranks dead last among starting quarterbacks in air yards per attempt. Conversely, you have the Saints allowing the fewest passing points per attempt when it comes to fantasy. So factor in a Saints secondary that's actually played the deep ball really well, that's limited opportunities. Um, Also knowing that you don't have somebody like Rasheed Rice that can help allow Worthy to stretch the field, Kelsey can only do so much on his own. I just don't think the deep chances are going to be there. If it's up to the Saints, they want Mahomes to have to dink and drop it off and, and limit some of those explosive plays. So 35 and a half, we know we saw it last week. I, I just don't think, based on the overall collective numbers, that we're going to see it on Monday Night Football at Arrowhead. So let's go lower for 35 and a half yards for Mahomes' longest completion. And then one more, another one that unfortunately did not come through for us last week, but I'm going to go back to the well for week five. Harrison Bucker. Higher than 1.5 field goals made. Uh, he was on track. Ha- had uh, had the two attempts, and uh, he's been nails for most of the year. Uh, just missed a long field goal last week, but uh, this is also an opportunity for him, knowing that the Chiefs are, are going to have some times where they might get into the red zone and, and struggle to convert uh, against a solid Saints pass defense. They've been elite when it comes to cracking down on scoring drives. Um, four out of the 13 scoring plays allowed by New Orleans have been touchdowns. That's the lowest rate in the league, just under 31%. So when it comes down to making stops on third down when they've needed to and settling for field goals, uh, there has been no defense better in the NFL this year than the New Orleans Saints. I think that plays in a Butker's advantage if you're looking for a higher prop. So let's go higher than 1.5 for Harrison Butker field goals made this week. Don't forget, sign up with the promo code KCSN. You can claim your free pick And also remember that first-time deposit offer up to $1,000 in bonus cash. Take advantage of Boost-tober all month long. Again, Travis Kelsey higher than 5.5 receptions. Patrick Mahomes lower than 35.5 yards on his longest completion. And Harrison Butker 1.5 field goals made on the higher side. Kent, back to you, my friend. Let's get a dub on Monday night. Shout out to our guy, Benny Eisler, with Benny's picks again. Promo code KCSM when you sign up with Underdog. And now it's time to close the show out with the guys from Only Weird Games here to talk about Xavier Worthy and his role in Week 5. Joshua Briscoe, Seth Kaiser, Nate Taylor, take it away. We got all three of us here this week from Only Weird Games for five things. We're going to talk about the Kansas City Chiefs pass catchers. Folks, I don't know if you're aware, but Rasheed Rice will not be playing in this game or the next several, and then we'll see beyond that. And the Chiefs' pass catchers over the last, let's say, year and four weeks or so uh, have have been a negative topic of conversation more often than they've been a positive one. So what are they going to do against the Saints? Seth Kaiser, what should they be doing with Xavier Worthy right now in your purview? Um, if, if it were me, you know, you've got an opportunity to see what Worthy can do before the bye mm. where you can start tinkering with things. And so I like the idea of giving him a really expanded role in this game and seeing what he does with it. See where the warts are. It's 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 a non-conference game. Yep, which matters. Um, now that the, they're, the, all the games are important at this point because the bye week is so important. Um, health is so important in the playoffs. An automatic win, and the Chiefs are currently alone atop the AFC. And so no game is one that's like a gimme, but it's non-conference, especially obviously non-divisional. It's a team that's not really familiar with you. It's a chance for you to experiment a little bit, get kind of weird in terms of going beyond what you normally do and giving a rookie a sizable role to see how he handles it. How does he handle some of the site adjustments? How does he deal with some of the pick plays or rub routes, whatever you want to call them? You know, how does he do with a couple additional shots down the field? And not just him, how does the offensive line hold up to continue to try to be a team that attacks down downhill a little more? 
I'd also love to see them experiment with a little more, not experiment, but utilize a little more under center, uh, a little more play action from that, take advantage of the fact that they're running the ball very well to start the season. And it helps Mahomes take a mental break from some of the things involving protections, even if it's not a physical break, because, you know, obviously play action back to the defense. That's yeah, stressful, but he seems very comfortable with it. I'd like to see them do those things, but really, especially with Worthy, I'd like to see him have an increased role so that way he can go into the bye week saying what worked, what didn't, what needs to be worked on, what doesn't. Nate, what do you think is actually going to happen here? Obviously, the uh, the Rasheed Rice injury happens early against the Chargers. The game plan gets, I don't want to say thrown out the window, but severely yep. impacted. The Chiefs will have an entire week and an extra day to get ready for New Orleans. What's it going to look like on Monday night? I love Seth's ideas. I'm just not sure they're actually going to happen, unfortunately. Um, I think the Chiefs may even save some stuff for Xavier Worthy because they play uh, the San Francisco 49ers coming off their bye week. Um, and, of course, it just gives him more time uh, to get through You know, some of the, the things they will be asking him to do uh, with the fact that we now know Rasheed Rice will at least miss the first four weeks of, of uh, the rest of the season. So, with all that in mind, I do think this is a game for Juju Smith-Schuster to kind of work alongside Travis Kelsey. He, I think you're going to see Travis Kelsey go back to being essentially the number one wide receiver, right? You, you will, you'll still see, I think, a decent amount of two, maybe three tight end sets, but maybe Kelsey's not actually in the traditional tight end uh, position role. Uh, I think there's, I think there's a chance, and I know this sounds crazy, but I'm thinking about this, and I said it on Only Weird Games that you know Andy Reid's gonna more than likely spitball this Josh, which with a bunch of junk and you know some randomness involved. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, you know Sky Moore's getting the target in the second quarter of this game. You think he'll you think he'll get a catch in the second quarter of this game? I said target. I don't know. How target. It's going. I don't know how it's gonna go, but I think you know they're going to use everybody. Um, I know some people are wondering who they who they will elevate. There's there might be a Justin Ross, but again, I don't know if he's going to be a major part of the game plan unless there's some, unfortunately unless there's other injury at the position. But I do think I do think this is the game for. Juju Smith-Schuster, Travis Kelsey, and you can still use Xavier Worthy as the deep threat to keep the defense hopefully honest um, because, to Seth's point, they have been running the ball well, so they don't have to put the entire burden on Patrick Mahomes, but they do need serviceable contributions across the board, and that even includes that one probably random target to Sky Moore. Go ahead and set your watch by it, folks. A random target to Sky Moore, some things you weren't expecting. Maybe we get at least a little longer look at what Xavier Worthy can do. It'll all be in prime time on Monday Night Football. Then we at Only Weird Games will be back live Tuesday afternoon to break it all down. We're pretty sure it'll be weird. Thanks to the guys from Only Weird Games. Appreciate them. Appreciate everybody that jumped on the show today. That is five things to watch presented by Batchelder Family Farms. Getting you ready for Chiefs Saints. Thanks for listening. We love you. We appreciate you. We'll catch you later.